Hello and welcome to this extremely highly requested extra special 100 subscriber Mythic Plus Red Pella Guide. Let's go. Now, before we start, I would like to say that this tutorial is going to be based on my research and experience so far in the Shadowlands. I'm not the best Red Paladin in the world, but I do try hard quite a lot in this game, so I do like to think that I, I know what I'm talking about, but there might be information that is not the very best option for you or whatever, so don't hate me for it. Now for talent build, this is pretty much the main talent build that uh, Red Paladins run in Mythic Pluses. Um, there is some variations, but let's go through all of the talent rows, rows right now. So, on the first row, uh, usually Zeo is the way to go, since uh, you're not really gonna be pressing Execution Sentence or Templar's Verdict on AoE, like at all. So they don't, these don't really give anything to AoE, DPS. You are gonna be pressing Judgment sometimes though so at least this can do something you know um, some people especially carrying paladins sometimes run execution sentence in mythic pluses especially on tyrannical weeks this is definitely viable um, carrions get more damage into this eight second execution sentence damage window with divine toll so i think that's what makes it uh, viable but I always go with zero. I don't like, like the execute sentence. On the second row, sorry, that was wrong. Empyrean power is usually the um, go-to talent. By far the best AoE talent. These two are okay as well. Better for single target though. But 99% of the time just go this. If you want to, if you want the more single target damage on tyrannical weeks, maybe take uh, Blade of Wrath for Vent here or this one for Kyrian single target. Uh, on this row just pick whatever um, you need, usually it's Fist of Justice because you get like 20 second cooldown on your stun with this if you just keep hitting targets. But Blinding Light is also very good, it's like an AoE interrupt basically. So if you're low on interrupts or just want an AoE CC, definitely try Blinding Light as well. Repentance I don't usually need. There is always somebody with the long CC in the, with the plus group and also it, it's not even needed really. Uh, here on this row, since we don't have a lot of defensive cooldowns, we want to take everything we can. So Unbreakable Spirit is the way to go. If however there is like a physical damage in the dungeon you know about that's gonna destroy you then you can definitely try to live it with this eye for an eye. Cavalier, we don't have a lot of mobility so this would be nice but it's just too big of a cost to lose like uh, one of these defensive ones instead. So I don't use this. <laughs> then uh, usually Divine Purpose is the way to go on the 40 level row. People play Seraphim for a Kyrian sometimes. Especially if you play Execute and Sentence. You want to take Seraphim with it for a Kyrian. But yeah, for newer players that um, this is a passive one, very easy, very nice. Also, I like the fact that the Divine Purpose procs, they count towards the cooldown reduction on Fist of Justice. This is even nicer in PvP, honestly. But it's also nice in Mythic Blasters, so I like to write, run the Divine Purpose. Uh, 45 level rule, always healing hands. For me at least, you can run selfless healer, some people do. But I like the big world of glories, even though they cost holy power still. 
I don't know, this one. Never ever did I play this in Mythic Plus. Sounds fun, but it's not really good. Cost too much. Uh, for the last roll, mm, Sanctified Wrath, again, most of the times, the way to go, it pulls a lot of AoE damage. And also it pairs up nicely with the Mad Paragon Legendary that I sometimes use because I don't have the Divine Storm Legendary yet. Uh, again, some Kyrians run Final Reckoning, but I don't really like playing it. I've noticed that a lot of people play Final Reckoning if they have the uh, this legendary, but I don't have that one either, so I just go Sanctified Wrath. So yeah, basically this is the main talent build for both Venthyr and Kyrian, but for Kyrian you can sometimes go like this, oh sorry, like this. And this is also what you see a lot of red Kyrians play in uh, raids for a single target. But yeah, this is my go-to. Okay, next let's talk uh, soul binds and conduits. Uh, for Kyrian, I would always just play Pelagos. And this is what the build would look like. So first get the uh, ringing clarity. This is best for Kyrian in like pretty much all content especially pvp and then i would ta definitely take shielding wards for the first endurance conduit this is absolutely huge i think i'm healing a lot in mythic blesses i every dungeon i cast like 20 to 35 word of glories so this is gonna help a lot and next just uh, this week that I'm making this guide, actually we unlocked uh, the second potency conduit from Pelagos. So since reds don't really have a lot of good AOE um, potency conduits, I would just take uh, Virtuous Command here. Another one that is pretty good is the Templar's Vindication. Um, but it doesn't really help on AoE again, so that's why I went with this one. For the last row, you can decide, you can either take uh, extra duration on Divine Steed. But again, I like to just get all the defensive stuff that I can, so I go with the Divine Call instead. Um, for Endurance Conduit, there is also the... Um, Consecration here, but this is this is actually quite weak. I've been testing it even in rage It's still Not too strong. So definitely wouldn't play this in Mythic Plus um, So for Kyrian just go Pelagos um, We haven't unlocked the last soul bunch yet, so I don't know about those but for now Pelagos seems to be the best For Kyrian you can actually go either one of the soul binds. This one I would go if I had to move more because the the first ability is a stacking buff that you get haste from. Unlike on the uh, Mad Duke, it's actually a pool that you have to stand in to get mastery. So if you don't want to stand in the pool, if you need to move uh, then I would probably play this one and uh, potency conduit is still pretty much the same but just command here then I take divine steed duration here it's, uh, in my opinion the best option of these uh, finest conduits there is also this which is pretty tempting so if you sacrifice someone they take a little bit less damage so if your tank is in trouble often then you might want to run this instead 
and then again shedding words and for last since we don't have the judgment divine soul conduit for vent here i took the templar's vindication here because red redstone really have a good aoe damage potency conduit uh, we do have wake of ash this one uh, but it's it's really not good damage wake of ash is shut such a long cooldown that this i don't feel like this is worth it so i just go virtuous command temporary vindication here for mad duke it's the same stuff pretty much the only difference being the first one um, I, I do like I play Mad Duke more but you do have to keep an eye on the master pools that you have to stand in I would imagine the current affixes of the week affects this choice between the, these two soul binds like if there is a sanguine or some other stuff you have to move from then maybe Mad Duke is not the best so bad for this week. For stat priority guys, it's not too far off from the rating stat priority, but there is one major exception, which is uh, Versa. Um, in hierarchy, since we don't have a whole lot of def defensive cooldowns, I like to stack Versa as much as I can. So. For me, I put this as priority number one stat for multi plus. Then the rest is pretty much the same. Haste and mastery very equal. Mastery usually sims a little bit higher on AOE, so I might want to stack this over haste just slightly. But at the same time, mastery doesn't help with off healing at all, which I think is very important in multi plus so for that reason yeah they are pretty much the same and then for the last would be crit which is also not a bad stat but just nothing special about this really also another thing i think is good to remind about is the diminishing returns on stats like off stats that were added in shadowlands which means basically that when you hit 30% uh, on any of your off stats from gear, the rest of the stat that goes over the 30% is uh, reduced by 10%. So for example, when you go over 30, you lose 10% of the stat. When you go over 40, you lose 20% lose of the stat going over 40 and so on so at this point when the gear is still fairly low there is I think no reason to go over 30% on any stats um, especially for red paladins because all the stats are very equal so I don't think you should go over 30% yet maybe on Versa if you still feel squishy and want more defensive but other than that try to stay below 30 and also notice that in master rate means the master rating which I have 17.46 percent right now it's not the it's not the holy damage so I'm nowhere near hitting this uh, soft cap on master yet Overall, as mentioned before, the stats are all very equal on Red Paddy. So just you should just go for the item level, honestly. And also the extra stats like Leech, Avoidance and Speed are actually not no joke, especially Leech is uh, super valuable. And, and you should actually look to get some Leech on your gear. Also, if you're the kind of guy who stands a lot in you might want to get some avoidance as well. That's never harmful to you at least. And then Red Pally is quite a um, immobile class, so the speed is not going to go to waste either. 
But yeah, overall, just go for the item level, guys. So, when it comes to my AoE rotation, this is how I like to do my burst. So, first, when you're approaching from a distance to the back, you jump in, do a little 360 into a judgment, into a um, blade of wrath. And then I do one Crusader Strike to get to four Holy Power. And also to get my Crusader Strike on cooldown. And also it gives me a chance for that Empyrean Power proc. Once I'm at four Holy Power, I start popping my cooldowns, which means Ash and Hollow, into Wings. And then I immediately throw in a Hammer of Wrath to get the fifth holy power and now since i'm at full holy power i need to start spending them so a divine storm then i'm missing three so i wake up ash and boom i'm back at five holy power then i spend again with divine storm and now i basically go into the usual aoe rotation or, or priority of abilities really Now for the Korean rotation at the opener, we are gonna go in with pretty much the same stuff. Korean could burst quicker, but we are still gonna go in with the same rotation pretty much just to get the holy power ready for the burst and also to give some time for our tank to get aggro. So let's take a look. We we'll jump in, 360 of course, start points, judgment. Blade of uh, Justice and uh, one Crusader Strike for Holy Power. Then we pop the cooldowns and Hammer of Wrath. Then we start spending with Divine Storms. We even get Proc right there, very good. Use that. And now when we're at zero Holy Power with Divine Tall, and we are at full, so we get to spend again. And after that, we, when we miss 3 holy power again we use wake of ash and we are at full and then we we'll spend so very similar to vent here and then we just go to the usual rotation which we're gonna take a look at next so after your opener burst rotation is done the AOE rotation is as follows and this is gonna sound very complicated but it's really not so try to stay with me so it's more like a priority of abilities the first one being wake of ashes so keep that on cooldown unless your your burst is just about to be ready again then I would definitely save wake of ash for the burst aka for the wings uh, second is blade of justice always keep that on cooldown unless you're at four holy power or five holy power of course then you don't want to use it because then you overcap yourself on holy power third is hammer of wrath um, but if you use mad paragon legendary i usually prioritize hammer of wrath over blade of justice because mad paragon gives you one second more duration on the wings every time you cast hammer of wrath but otherwise i would place it to third um, also if you're in execute phase without wings then it's third because if you don't have wings up obviously it's not going to extend wing duration either then fourth would be judgment the fifth would be a crusader strike but you don't have to keep both of the charges of crusader strike or put on at once just make sure at least one is used so it's always um, loading for the next one then sixth if you have ac absolutely nothing to generate holy power with and you can't spend either then you pretty much press consecration um, and then for spenders you don't always have to spend holy power at three holy power if one of these um, generators is ready and you're not gonna overcap yourself with holy power 
by using it, then use the generator first. So usually what I do is I go all the way to five or four holy power and then spend. So it's you really just wanna keep as many of the generators on cooldown as you can. The spenders as a red pally are Templar's Verdict and Divine Storm. If there is one target, use Templar's Verdict. If there is two or more targets, always Divine Storm. So in dungeons, a lot of times you're gonna be pressing the Divine Storm. That's also what makes the uh, Divine Storm legendary the best for multi classes. Also, one thing I like to do is um, because Divine Storm is capped on 5 targets, if you're fight, fighting less than 5 targets and you see that a target is about to die, then even if you're only at 3 Holy Power, I would spend the Holy Power to Divine Storm because then your Divine Storm is gonna hit one more target, right? A lot of didn't get damage as a rare paddy in the classes is definitely down to cooldown management like if you just do a lot of keys and you know the dungeons then you learn when you should be popping your cooldowns and also if you communicate with your team so you don't all pop cooldowns at the same time on the same pack then they're not gonna be wasted as much so then overall your damage is gonna increase if you don't waste your cooldowns one other thing you can use for doing a little bit more damage is uh, Shield of Vengeance. If you're confident that you're not gonna die uh, anytime soon, then you can use Shield of Vengeance for damage. Maybe stand in damage pool or something a little bit just to explode the Shield of Vengeance. One great place to use Shield of Vengeance is actually on the Prideful mob. I often almost always proc shield vengeance at 20% of the prideful mob's health because that is when it's dealing the highest amount of damage to the group so that's when the healer needs help and also if you pop it at 20% it's gonna break before the mob dies and explode like an extra 12k damage on the prideful mob so that is one of the best uses of shield vengeance that I can think of Okay, now let's take a look at a few quick tips that I've picked up so far. These are not specifically for red pallies. So this is probably, hopefully good for everyone. Uh, let's start from Mist. In Mist, if you have a Night Fae, you can open the door here for the Mushroom buffs. And the trick is that you can actually do this on Mythic Zero first and when four of your party members are ready to loot the buffs then the one with the key should be here at the start ready to place the key so get your buffs start the key and they're gonna stay in the mythic plus and you can still go here in mythic plus as well and then extend the buffs then on the first boss don't pop cooldowns on the start wait for this buff 200% damage buff for 12 seconds from killing this mob first so kill this first then it's gonna use this on the other boss pop all cooldowns tell your team to use a hero here and then blast this guy if this guy has um, like even close to the same health as this one after the damage buff then just focus this main boss down. No need to go through another phase of killing this. In the other side, not a lot of tips here. If you are struggling on Hakar, you can um, pop hero at 80% health here actually, because it doesn't really have a lot of mechanics before that. Do kill the adds, because the boss gets a shield from the adds. So that's not good. Then on the gnomes, you don't want to pop uh, cooldowns on the first gnome. But instead, keep it alive. Don't fully kill it on the first phase. Because otherwise you won't get stuns from this guy to the second phase. So when this 
boss starts uh, this AOE barrage, you need a stun for it from the other boss. So when the second gnome spawns, pop hero on this, cooldowns on this and make sure you hit the stun. Okay, we are in holes. On the second boss, when the imps spawn, don't use any AOE on them, because the second you hit them for the first time, they start casting. So if your team doesn't hit them at all until they're at the middle, it's way easier to group them up and then AOE stun them and AOE DPS them as well. On the second boss, you can actually use both of these bats on the boss, but you can only pull one at a time. So pull the uh, first one to the boss, mind control it with the Ventier Covenant ability, and when the first one is gone, a hunter or something can actually from here pull the second one in. So do like a jump here and shoot this one to pull it in. Probably works with any range 40 yard instant ability at least. So pull the second one in, mind control it. Boom boom. Okay, plague fall. Um, not a lot of tips again. Just make sure you use the canisters to kill a lot of mobs. Like a lot of canisters, use those. On the tentacles, you can of course stun them when they grip somebody, but you can actually also freedom the player on the paladin. And on the on the last boss, please help your healers with this belly. Very important. Okay, sanguine depths. Same thing as in mist. You can actually go on mythic zero to the first lantern here get the buff from it and then go back to activate the key and the buff is gonna stay for the Mythic Plus. On this one though, the timer is a little bit tighter, so you just get a minute buff and then if you wanna refresh it in the Mythic Plus, you gotta go really fast, activate the lantern again, kill some mobs in it and it will remain 10 or how many ever stacks you got. 10 is the maximum. Uh, on the last boss, you can try to get a lantern buff from like around here to the last boss but it's a pretty long run so you have to clear or all, all this um, this first and then pull like some of these mobs to it it's quite difficult might not recommend it honestly okay spires first boss the bosses have a shared health pool so just cleave here divine storm spam 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 third boss there is again a damage phase so when the boss's um, energy bar goes to zero, he gets a damage taken debuff. There we go. Drained. So we'll pop hero and and cooldowns on this one. Then in the last boss room, I would uh, not save cooldowns on these guys because these are actually tough. Don't save cooldowns on these. The boss is easier actually than some of these angels. Pop wings. For a necrotic quick, just pretty much manage the uh, the weapons you get all over the place for the packs and bosses that you actually need them on. I would recommend, uh, for example, this boss, and then save towards the re like the end of the instance. Like if your tank is getting killed here too much on some of these packs, you can actually use the spear so that you target the mob at the very back of the back and then it's gonna shoot through the back so hit multiple mobs with the uh, the spear which is of course more useful than just hitting one boss in most cases and for the last boss um, you can actually freedom the freezes here the big circles as a paladin so do that all right and the last one theater of pain uh, on this boss the 10 percent damage buff or whatever you get from the dueling it's not worth it just pop your cooldowns on the the pool i would say uh here on this boss you actually get a good damage buff from the um, rip soul so i would definitely save my cooldowns for that one and also pop harris after the uh, first rip souls on the gore crop, if you're on voice chat with your team and somebody starts screaming, that probably means that they're in a wall. So just pop them if they get hit by the hook wall. The, um, the last boss gets way harder, around 50% health, 
on the mechanics so i would recommend saving cooldowns in hero for that 50 percent marker and then just blast it down okay that is it for this guide thank you very much for watching and if you want to help out please let me know what kind of uh, video would you like to see i was thinking of making a video about the um, ui and macros or then like a similar guide before raiding or pvp this was my very first guide um, so yeah let me know and of course uh, like and subscribe and stuff thank you very much